Hey everyone, I'm Tiffany and welcome to Wise Skies. Wise Skies is a spiritual development agency. We focus on astrology, human design, and spirit and psychic development, which is all part of spiritual development. Uh, I'm here to give you the Q3 astrology forecast. So we're going to be talking about July, August, and September of 2023. Um, I'm sitting at my aunt's condo at the beach having a really nice coffee. We've had a huge storm come through. It's uh, one of my favorite things to do is thumb through old cookbooks and look at all these recipes for things like macadamia nuts, stuffed celery and mushrooms stuffed with walnuts. And, you know, I know that that uh, just being in the kitchen and being at the beach and having all of these traditions and memories associated with summer, they're so pleasant. There are There's like an anchor, you know what I mean? And astrology can be that anchor for you as times change July through September. So I want you to think about your traditions. I want you to think about the things that bring you comfort, um, that give you peace, and I want you to be able to use those as times change this quarter. So this is a season of revisiting themes around romance and finance, and there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, some of the most exciting astrology of the year is happening in July. And so we're gonna spend a little extra time in July, and then we'll move into August and September. So I encourage you to get your cup of coffee or your water and just enjoy the podcast episode today. So um, why is it a season of revisiting themes around romance and finance? Well, a couple of things. Venus is going to square Uranus three times this season. Um, also, Venus is going to retrograde. We're going to have a lot of activity in Leo and Virgo placements. And so if you have in your chart a lot of planets or uh, activity in Virgo and Leo placements, I think you're going to feel this a little bit louder, a little bit more strong. So uh, Venus squaring Uranus three times, that's very unpredictable. You know, a square produces some sort of challenge. Uh, Uranus already has this element of surprise and change and brilliant and Einstein moments and very futuristic and out of the box thinking. Uh, and Venus, of course, the goddess of love that also rules our worth and our self-worth. So when those energies those planetary energies are in kind of a challenging position or a conflict, it's going to bring up things that are very unpredictable with love and money. Uh, and so this is a great season um, to check in and to check your motivations and to check your what's driving you. Is what's driving you fear or is what's driving you love, right, when it comes to love and money? Uh, Venus square Uranus three times this season. This is another kind of big picture theme that I want to go over. It's not all bad, right? You could look at things like you might see relationships where there's a huge age gap, right? You might see uh, um, people bringing the, the old traditional ways into the futuristic ways and vice versa. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of celebrity breakups and um, proposals. I think, you know, Leo rules uh, our entertainment arena. Okay. So I think that we're going to see a lot of um, this activity of the astrology. I think it's going to be very apparent in the media this season. Um, so I want you to be prepared financially for some unexpected expenses, some unexpected events, uh, and they might be fun surprises, right? But we're going to be prepared either way uh, with a kind of a conservative approach uh, to spending this season. So this is not a good season for travel for pleasure. Now, I have a ton of travel this whole year, right? But this isn't like, this would not be a good season to book your dream vacation to the Bahamas, for example. Nothing against the Bahamas. If you're going, you're going to be fine. You're going to have a good time. But it's almost like that ideal that you held for something, and then it's it's not what you had in mind. So uh, there could be just a storm the whole time and you can't enjoy any of the snorkeling or the activities that you wanted to do. You know what I mean? Stuff like this. So this is also not a good season for elective surgeries and uh, changing your appearance drastically. Okay. So uh, keep that in mind. So those are some of the big picture vibes. Let's move into the energy of July, 2023. So July 2023 is going to be a wild ride. Uh, there's a lot of interesting astrology going on in the skies. Venus is going to be retrograde. The nodes are going to shift signs, right? That's going to be interesting. They're shifting from Scorpio Taurus into Aries Libra. 
And we're going to get into that when we get into the dates. Your July intention is I experience adventure, freedom, and inner peace. You know, sometimes when we intend to experience adventure, it can cause a bit of chaos in the nervous system. So can you experience adventure while also holding on to that place of stability, that inner peace, that four of wands feeling? The July numerology is going to be a five month in a seven year. And so the five, if you worked in June to organize, to get things in place, to create structures around something, to create procedures around something, um, to kind of be a little bit more minimalistic or think through things very methodically, you're going to have a really clean slate to enjoy the five energy in July, which makes everything a little bit more fun. If you have the structure and the foundation in place, you can then be creative. You know, if you get your house gutted and reorganized, you can have fun decorating and putting in the final touches and stuff like this in July. So um, expanding, you know, think of the five as your five fingers and the energy expanding out, um, getting creative. So uh, the seven, of course, this is a year of a soul quest of going on a, an adventure that really takes you into the higher realms of the soul and your soul purpose, right? So um, just be careful not to spread yourself too thin. There can be some distractions. There can be some inconsistencies and things that can take you off in several directions. And so if you're feeling overwhelmed, just go back to one of our favorite questions. What do you want to be free from? What do you want to be free for? And just having some honesty with yourself. Uh, in, in July, the big theme is... Um, the big themes are Venus and Chiron retrograde. I mentioned the nodes. And then we also have some unpredictable skies. I want you to circle June 2nd and 23rd as uh, the areas for really unpredictable energy. Um, go slow and just take all your safety precautions. So um, our classes at Wise Skies in July, the theme is about inner vision. And on the first, I'm teaching a 12th house class on astrology. On the 13th, Alicia is going to be teaching about the individual channels in human design. And on the 20th, I'm going to be teaching about our psychic senses going into feelings. And I have some really fun exercises. I'm excited about all of our classes, but I just created some of the exercises for psychic development. So I hope you can make it if you're interested. Um, all right. So there's always big energy on the first day of the month. I like this day. I like the first day if you're going to uh, do some organization, some house cleaning, some energy clearing, some feng shui, if you're going to do some crystal grids, uh, if you're going to change your address numerology. I love doing that on the first day of the month. And the first day energy kind of sets the tone. It gives you a sneak peek for what the rest of the month is going to look like. And we have a really um, interesting setup. We have the sun and Mercury and Kazemi, right? Mercury is in the heart of the sun and they are in sextile to Jupiter. And so I think you're going to have some powerful uh, new visions, some information wizardry, some information exchange, some classes, some opportunities, some ideas, some good news, uh, news, some good news, and perhaps some more focus and communications. Okay, so you could really be bringing things into focus on the first day of the month. Um, on the third, we're going to have a full moon at 11 degrees of Capricorn. Uh, I like to think about how you're taking care of your future self with Capricorn. So Capricorn, of course, is a sign that we associate with business and goals and ambition, um, but it's the sea goat, right? So uh, how is the sea goat helping you conquer these real life problems on land, climbing mountains, and at sea, working with your intuitive side, right? So um, under the light of the full moon, the 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 tensions are high. Um, it's time to make some adjustments. It's time to uh, celebrate your progress, to be aware of some of the excess energies going on. Um, you want to look for signs and symbols from spirit having to do with all things Capricorn, um, your contribution to society, uh, your long-term goals. Like I said, the, the goals you have on land and your intuitive goals or your intuitive progress or your intuitive, um, what's the right word, like alignment, maybe I should say. So uh, let's see, this moon family cycle started on January 2nd of 2022. So a new cycle began on October 3rd of 2022. Something from that new cycle kicked into gear. And now on July 3rd of 2023, where we're talking about this full moon, there's a pivot, more is revealed. Uh, and this will culminate and complete on April 2nd of 2024. 
So um, think about this full moon as uh, like a third anchor point in a, a moon family cycle that spans four moons starting from January 2022 to next April. And then um, under this full moon, you know, uh, really just look for, uh, you don't have to really even do anything. You're just kind of observing your life around you. What's changing in terms of your, uh, your public figures, your public appearance, um, the way that the world sees you? Uh, what's changed in terms of your ambitions and goals for your career, for your job, for your business, right? So just notice, right? Just bringing things into the awareness and making the unconscious conscious really is what shifts things. So right behind that, July 5th through 9th uh, is a good opportunity to do some rewiring. Mercury is going to square Chiron and sextile Uranus and try Neptune. So there's a heavy Mercury emphasis and it, there's um, kind of a, a blending of this intellectual side of Mercury into the dreamy side, right? of Neptune. And so dreams are going to be really strong influences right now. Uh, this can be a powerful time to forgive, right? One of the most powerful medicines in the world. If you really want to change things, if you really want to drop the rock is going to be forgiveness. Okay. And so this time, it, it, there's not a bad time to work with forgiveness, right? But specifically July 5th through 9th, you might notice that there are some themes around uh, forgiveness. You might have some prophetic dreams. You might have some uh, memories come up that you're working through some of the emotions on. Um, there might be, uh, you might be going through a really creative streak, right? And so life can take on this dreamlike quality that you can bring that essence of the dream into the real world. Now, Mars is going to enter Virgo on July 10th, and it'll be there through August 27th. So I think about precision when I think about Mars and Virgo, and I, I always think about like a surgeon or a doctor or somebody in the medical field who has to be really precise with uh, things that if without precision, it can get dangerous really quickly, right? So Mars and Virgo, you're going to be thinking about fine tuning. You're going to be thinking about fine tuning your health. Uh, you're going to be thinking about um, procedures and routines and service and um actively working through uh, anything that has to do with nutrition or herbs or uh, volunteerism or uh, any kind of orientation to details and fine tuning and polishing things, right? Mars is very yang and Virgo is an earth sign um, that is heavily oriented to data, to polishing, to um, service and all the things that I just mentioned. So you can work with this energy again, July 10th through August 27th. Mercury is going to enter Leo July 10th through 28th. So here we see the Mercury, I mean, excuse me, the Virgo and Leo themes cropping up, right? Early July, lots of energy in this part of the skies and therefore this part of your chart. Mercury is going to oppose Pluto as it enters uh, Leo July 10th. And so I want you to consider who or what is taking center stage. Um, are you, are you kind of being deceived by the illusion or are you aware of the illusion and it's just some entertainment? Um, this is a really good window to make big announcements. Pluto is kind of a wrecking ball, right? And uh, uh, Mercury will help you get featured. It'll help you get featured in a big way. And so that can be uh, some interesting headlines. So, um, Mercury opposing Leo, you know, I guess the downside of that is that you could be hyper focusing on something and missing the big picture. So being aware of that. Again, travel not ideal during this time. July 10th, the same day that Mercury opposes Pluto and enters Leo, we will have a last quarter moon at 17 degrees of Aries. The last quarter moon represents a harvest time uh, when bills are due, when something is coming to fruition. Something that started two and a half years ago is coming up for completion. An old conversation that's been kind of dragging on, finally you have clarity on and wrap, you can wrap it up and drop it. Um, so just notice what feels really complete around July 10th. Um, on the 12th through 14th, there's definitely going to be some kind of change of plans. So leave some extra room in your schedule. This isn't an ideal time to like book yourself to the hilt. Um, you're, what we're going to see is that the sun is going to square Chiron and sextile Uranus. And so I feel like 
uh, whatever is cropping up, that sun square Chiron, you think about Chiron being the wounded healer and sun being the self. And so there can be some self-inflicted uh, wounds where you're, you're taking things personally, where you're making something about you when it's not about you, right? And so I want you to, to be aware of um, yourself during this little window. And I want you to give yourself some breathing room for a change of plans. Um, remember that life is happening from us, not to us. And so if it looks a little wonky out there, you don't like what you see, we just have to go back inside and have that stillness and that quiet time. So be willing to change your plans and to go back and have some uh, private time, right? Okay. So on the 17th, we've got a new moon at 24 degrees of Cancer and then the nodes change signs. Whoa, mark your calendars for this date. So the new moon intention is, I love how I feel at home. You know, it's so important to love your space. Uh, if you're not comfortable at home, if you're waking up and, and there's piles of bills, or if you're waking up and their laundry hasn't been done, or if you're not, if you're leaving the house and it just feels like messy and you're coming back to a mess, it's going to put a tone on everything you do, right? Uh, and you're not going to have that optimal clarity that you can have when it feels so good when you're in your own space. So uh, this new moon at Cancer, um, you can set some intentions around your home, your family, real estate, uh, emotional healing, intuition, psychic development, personal space. You can also let go of some control tendencies, right? You can be aware of where you might be controlling things. Um, it's also a good time to set up some new meal plans, some home cooked meals to be looking at, you know, your old cookbooks and recipes and flipping through and getting some new ideas uh, for the season. So more is going to be shown over time wherever you have 24 degrees of cancer in your chart. This kicks off a new two and a half year cycle in the moon family of cancer. The moon family story starts on July 17th and it, it, um, the first quarter moon in this moon family phase goes excuse me, is April 15th on 2024. The full moon is January 13th of 2025. And the last quarter moon when this two and a half cycle, two and a half year cycle completes is on October 13th of 2025. The Sabian symbol for this new moon at 24 degrees of cancer, okay, is a dark shadow or mantle thrown suddenly over the right shoulder. That's pretty specific a dark shadow or mantle thrown suddenly over the right shoulder. Very interesting imagery for a new moon in Cancer. Now, I think that if you're feeling this like, wow, this is really a shift of energy, it's more than the new moon, right? The nodes are gonna shift from Scorpio Taurus which has to do with inflation and recession. And uh, it's the money axis, right? It's going to shift from the money axis into the relationship as, uh, axis of Libra and Aries. Um, the nodes were last in Libra and Aries, September of 1939 to May of 1940, or excuse me, that's one of the most significant times when the nodes were in Aries and Libra. Um, it symbolized a time of war. Um, and so the nodes tell, tell a tale of past and future karmas. Uh, a lot of astrologers lean in the, the fable of the dragon. You know, the north node is the eating and chomping and digesting side. And the, the south node is the tail end of things that are being eliminated and moved through. And so you can think about this uh, imagery as well. So this period, right, we're... We've got the new moon, Mercury squaring Jupiter. The nodes are changing signs. Um, we're going to see some themes crop up about like the me versus the we, the Aries, the need to be the individual versus the Libra, the need to be the partner. We're going to see all of the themes around codependency. That can be within nations. It can be within households. It can be, um, you know, with any micro or macrocosm. But this idea of me versus we and uh, who we are partnering with and uh, these type of themes that feel very karmic, feel very destined, feel very faded. So this will be an interesting time to see what sacred contracts are coming up for uh, awareness right through this time in history. So can we be at peace even now? 
The sun is going to enter Leo July 22nd through August 23rd. Make sure you plan ahead and get your Leos a sweet gift from us at Wise Skies. We would love to give them a reading, um, but make sure you don't forget your Leos and give them happy birthday love. Um, and we can all tap into our confident, creative star power while the sun is in Leo. So uh, that's a little bit of bright news. <laughs> now, we also have around this time of the month, right? Right after the nodes have shifted and this new moon in Cancer, um, Mercury is going to square Uranus and Venus and Chiron will both retrograde, okay? Um, this is all happening on July 23rd. So July 23rd is going to be another interesting date. You might see it occur a little bit before or after, right? So this, what's being illuminated right now is really disruption, uh, chaos, um, changing of plans, uh, having fixed ideas and having to change your mind. Um, you want to be aware that right, Mercury rules the nervous system and it rules messages that are being exchanged in the body. So uh, we, if we're having hormone dysregulation, if we're having nervous system dysregulation, um, Mer Mercury square Uranus, this can also be a misfiring of signals and cues. Uh, now Venus retrograde in Leo, that will happen July 23rd through September 4th. And so this period can influence a return of past loves, unrequited love, uh, a recognition of like a, a, re a reignition, is that a word? Well, that was a lot. Recognition of reignition of romance uh, in your current relationships. Uh, somebody like a blast from the past could show up and stir up the pot a little bit. Um, Venus retrograde can generate Mars-like activity, right? It can be very stimulating, hot, bothered, things like this. Uh, Venus retrograde in Leo, again, the sign of entertainment and the celebrity. So maybe you get an opportunity to meet your celebrity crush, or maybe your celebrity crush does something that's kind of disappointing to you, and you have to uh, think about things differently. Um, so Venus retrograde in Leo, this can also be a time um, when your financial life is being resorted, right? So big things, big theme. One of the biggest pieces of astrology, the nodes and this Venus retrograde all year long. Chiron's going to retrograde in Aries. Um, this is its season for it. So it, Chiron will retrograde July 23rd, the same day, all the way through December 27th. And so this is just about revisiting the tools and the techniques and the strategies you have for self-help, self-development, self-healing, things like this. Um, Chiron and Aries, you know, this is why when I have these astrology classes, it's like be, become an astrologer. Don't consult one, right? Become a psychic. Don't consult one. Like use your own um, your own life as your measure for uh, anything that you want to know out there. Like you don't have to go out there to get information on astrology and uh, psychic work, right? You can learn these techniques for yourself. I get uh, passionate about this because Chiron and Aries, man, what a unique time where, where we're not looking outside so much that we're looking inside, right? It can be a very um, transformative experience. So uh, July 25th, we've got a first quarter moon at two degrees of Scorpio. Of course, a first quarter moon is a yang time. This isn't time to kick tires and contemplate and wonder. It's time to kind of get into gear about something. Wherever two degrees of Scorpio is in your chart, we'll give you a clue. As we finish the month of July, I think that we are going to see a major turning point. Pluto is going to square the nodes that have freshly moved signs. Mercury is going to conjunct Venus retrograde. Um, and so the skies are really encouraging you to focus on your quality of life, your quality of life, right? And you're going to um, be asked to resolve any uh, issues that have popped up, these unresolved emotions, unresolved feelings. Um, that can be a lot. So make sure you have your support and your traditions and your space clear uh, so that you are ready to face anything. Um, my yogi teacher used to say, we don't know what we're practicing for, right? We, you never know what you're practicing for, but keep the practices in place so that you're ready um, when these larger life events occur, right? So that you're in your meditation practice, you're uh, taking the herbs, right? The herbs are in your system, um, that you're working with or the vitamins that are supporting you. It's not like you had nothing and then an incident occurs and then you're trying to rebuild and repair the whole time. It's like you were kind of ready for it and there's a blip in the system, but you have your tools, your strategies, your techniques to ride all of the waves of July. 
Uh, Mercury is going to then move into Virgo July 28th through October 4th. That's a long time. And a word that comes to mind with Mercury and Virgo is minimalism, right? We've had this precision, uh, this idea around like procedures, protocols, um, paring things down. Um, Mercury rules the mind and communication and Virgo rules health and healing and attention to details. And so you can work with this energy into July all the way into October. Okay, let's take a breather and move into August of 2023. Y'all, I'm gonna let my coffee get cold over here. Oh. So good. Okay, August 2023, your theme is no place like home. Your August intention is, I enjoy feeling at peace in my body and nourished in my home. Um, some of the themes are going to be about making home a place you run to, not away from. Um, Mercury is going to join the retrograde party. Um, we've got some unpredictable skies, unexpected expenses, surprise visits, things like this are more likely August 9th and the 15th. And then we have two full moons in August on the 1st and the 31st. And so the one on the 31st, the second full moon of the month is known as a blue moon. So that you can look up the lore and magic and symbolism with a blue moon, uh, but that's kind of fun. Um, at Wise Skies in August, our class focuses on the Lion's Gate. And uh, just as a heads up, we will be out um, for August, we will be out on a training. Uh, I'm going to be gone the entire month. And so we're going to set up our classes as videos. And so we're going to have those prepared for you. Um, but they won't be live, and I just wanted to give you a heads up about that. But on the 5th, we're going to release the astrology video about Lionsgate, on the 10th, uh, about the tribal channels in human design, and on the 17th, about automatic writing. So this will be pre-recorded, it won't be live, um, but automatic writing, that and the meditation that goes with that, I think you're just really going to enjoy, and I think it's the perfect month under the Lionsgate energy to be working um, with with. Uh, automatic writing. So the numerology in August, let's see, it's a six month and a seven year. And we're going to see uh, the six month is one of my favorite months because it has to do with home and nurturing and nesting. And that's why I feel like home is going to continue to be a theme. So if you use June to get things in order and you use July to kind of do the fine tune and the beautiful creative details, and then now in August, like you can really uh, have everything in place to relax and to succeed. Um, so keep asking yourself, you know, what's most loving for me? What's most loving at, in my home? Um, we all deserve more unconditional love, not less. Big energy on the first day, right? The first day of the month sets the tone. Uh, we've got some strong energy on August 1st. Mars is going to try and Jupiter. Mercury is going to oppose retrograde at Saturn. We are going to have a full moon on August 1st. So let's talk about that. The full moon August 1st is going to be in nine degrees of Aquarius. This gives us this pivotal vision for the future, right? This full moon, it always illuminates something uh, in the middle of the story where we have an opportunity to keep going or to pivot. And so this moon, I love the full moon in Aquarius. I always feel like it's liberating you something from something that has been driving you crazy. It's the crazy making moon. And so all of the crazies are going to stir up so that you can feel like, oh, that one drives me nuts. I'm going to try to uh, let that one go. I'm not going to let the crazy making things in my life um, live in my head anymore. So Aquarius also rules groups and friends and networks. And so the full moon might be a time when you're trying to end something or separate yourself from a group or situation or a um, friend group that is just not full, uh, helping you out right now. And so there could be a temporary separation or a more permanent separation where you want to really step away um, and be involved in a different group. So creating a little space for yourself to unplug on August 1st and reassess some of this energy can be helpful. There is definitely excess energy on August 1st, and there's definitely time for you to celebrate your progress in this larger 27-month um, cycle that started on February 1st of 2022, and it will end on May 1st of 2024. 
August 2nd through 11th, man, this is more just really unpredictable skies. This is where the astrology can um, confuse us because which thing do you anchor onto? Uh, Mercury is going to be in a retro shade period. Um, Venus is still retrograde. And so what is being renegotiated and reorganized while we're under this kind of fog warning, right? And so you don't want to come to any strong conclusions during this time. Um, savings and moderation are still important. The sun is going to square Jupiter. Um, we're going to watch out for surprise expenses the first couple of weeks of August. There's a last quarter moon on the 8th in, in Taurus. Uh, and so this is something where we really want to pay some bills off, get some headway on some debt, things like this. Um, the 9th through the 11th, you know, the gift of all of these unpredictable times is that we can really start to build our faith and learn to trust ourselves um, and learn to repair in ourselves if, if needed. It's not a good time to be spending and traveling. Venus is going to square Uranus. Mercury is going to try and Jupiter, which technically brings good news. But good news doesn't always show up in the way that we want it to, right? So that's why there's some conflicting energy going on in the skies. Um, on the 16th, we've got a new moon at 23 degrees of Leo. And I think that's where you're going to feel like, whew, okay, the inner, that like uncomfortable side, it's, we're getting a little break here in the storm. And on August 16th, the new moon in Leo helps us be the star of our own show. Um, my good friend, Deborah Mastelato wrote the book called The Tarot Primer. And when she does book signings, she that's what she puts in the book is be the star of your own life. And that is really what reminds me of this new moon in Leo. Um, so be the star of your own life, even if it's a little messy at times, even if it's not perfect. Um, you can set your intentions around Leo things, heart-centered leadership. Um, having fun, creative projects, uh, romance, and passion. Maybe there's some resetting going on while Venus is retrograde. So the sun is going to try in the north node on this new moon, and that's going to help uplift the energy, um, make us feel like there's a little bit of destiny at play. Uh, it's going to be a little bit lighter. Now, funny thing, the Sabian symbol with this new moon is an untidy, unkempt man. OK, so you can go into your meditation and write about what this means for you. But that's why this the Sabian symbol is why I said be the star of your own life, even if it's messy, even if it's imperfect. You know, you don't have to. Uh, I certainly don't make the perfect YouTube video. Right. I, I'm just kind of chilling with my cookbook and my coffee. And uh, right. It's things like this. So something to play with this new moon family uh, cycle starts on August 16th, something kicks into gear on May 15th of 2024, more is revealed on February 12th of 2025, and the mission completes in November 12th of 2025. So two and a half years, kicks off August 16th, feels very faded, destiny, purpose-driven, powerful time for you to rise and shine. Uh, the 23rd and 24th, there's a little bit of bittersweet energy. If you're feeling like you need to escape, if you're feeling like you want to get away, if you're feeling like you want to detach with love, you can blame Venus square Jupiter and Mars opposing Neptune. So, um, you know, Mars and Neptune, I'm also wondering if you have autoimmune issues or medical mysteries, those things might, you might see a flare up depending on where Mars opposing Neptune hits your chart. You know, if it has a hard aspect or um, if it's maybe like in your sixth, 12th house, uh, excuse me, sixth house uh, access, that might be an interesting placement for some medical mysteries. Um, so this is a time of restoration and it might not feel so great. So just uh, be aware that we're in a part of the process that the energy is a little bit lower. The sun will enter Virgo August 23rd through September 23rd. Make sure you gift your Virgos. Happy birthday, all of you Virgos out there. We love you. Um, we can all tap into the Virgo energy that's very hardworking, highly organized, service-oriented, um, earthy, grounded, practical. Um, whenever I have like a, <clears throat> a, a problem I can't solve, I call my cousin Virgo, <laughs> my, my, my cousin who is a Virgo, my Virgo cousin, I should say it that way. And, uh, and, you know, it's like I properly text. I don't just like pick up the phone. I mean, sometimes I do, but I try to give the advance warning and say, look, I need to work through this situation. It's organized this way. It's not going well. How can we reshape this? So 
I absolutely love my, the Virgos in my life. Mercury is going to retrograde in Virgo uh, on the same day that the sun enters Virgo. So Mercury retrogrades August 23rd through September 15th. It's going to require some patience, right? Uh, so Virgo, if you're going to use this time wisely, you're thinking about redoing some themes around your health. So this could be um, redoing some, like creating some new workout patterns. Um, there's lots to think about with Mercury. There's lots of uh, opportunities for you to stay curious and open-minded as you recreate some eating and diet and exercise plans. Um, you know, um, this is a good time to lose weight if you need to, or to get more methodical and procedural about your health if you need to, as this could be a time when you're getting a second opinion or changing doctors or changing from Western to Eastern medicine or Eastern to Western or all of that can be in flux. So Mercury will exit the post shadow period September 30th. So things are still pretty foggy during this quarter. And um, it will retrograde again in December. Okay, December. 13th through January 1st, just so you know, just so you know. <laughs> All right. So at the end of August, we do get a little energy boost. Uh, we get a first quarter moon and at the same time, Mars is going to try and Pluto. So there's, there's some energy boost. Uh, don't force or push, but just notice what things are coming to you and then strategize around them. Action that you take now under this first quarter moon and Mars trying Pluto, man, actions that you take now are going to have big results. It is a yang period, right? It is a yang period to get in the gear about something. So what pressures are working in your favor right now? Mars will enter Libra August 27th through October 12th. Okay, so Venus rules Libra. And so Mars being in Libra during this time, it's like this can be a time when you can really strategize with diplomacy, when you can think about uh, what's most fair for all involved. You could be questioning things because you can see both sides of the fence so well. Um, it's a good thing, you know, Mars being in Libra. Um, it's a good thing that we're capable of seeing multiple perspectives, but that can slow down the decision making process quite a bit. So, balancing things out, you know, whether that's your hormone health, your central nervous system, uh, the color palette in your house, your work-life balance, like something is trying to balance itself out, right? August 29th, Uranus will retrograde in Taurus. It'll return direct January next year. Um, you know, I feel like there's always a slowdown in energy before the outer planets go retrograde. So if you notice you're a little bit more tired around the 28th, 29th, 30th, that's going to make sense. Um, Taurus, of course, rules our food and our finances. Uh, so if you find yourself a little bit more hungry or hungry for different things or things that like you're not normally hungry for, that could be uh, kind of the, the twist of Uranus retrograde in Taurus. And really the thing, if you're hungry, if you're hungry for something that's unusual to you, this is your body's way of grounding and seeking comfort. So you want to be planning these healthy home-cooked uh, meals to help you say to stay satiated and grounded as times change. Um, at the very end of the month, August 31st, we have that full moon at seven degrees of Pisces, and this is really going to illuminate your psychic self. We were born wise. We have most of us have these senses, right? Sight, smelling, tasting, hearing, feeling, um, emotional perception, and all of these extend out into the psychic realm. So this full moon at seven degrees of Pisces is going to help you learn how to trust your gut, how to stay grounded while you're trusting your gut. Um, Pisces, this is also an illumination of the things that you are uh, wanting to be creative about, the things that you want to escape from, right? The, the downside of Pisces is this escapism. It's often into drugs, alcohol, music, uh, things that really take you away, right? So being extra careful around this time period, um, the full moon shows us where we need to face some facts and make some adjustments and reflect on what's being shown to us at this time. So it's not necessarily like I can predict for you and say, well, this is what you're going to have to face the facts about. Now I can point you in the right direction because we can see where seven degrees of Pisces is in your chart. Um, but uh, Pisces, you know, sometimes 
with a, a full moon illuminating the Pisces area, it might show you where you need to ha have some boundaries in place. It might show you where you need to erase some boundaries that you've been too hard with. And so this is just going to be independent on each individual, of course. But wherever the full moon it strikes you in your chart, it's a time to celebrate your progress because you've been going through something over this larger two and a half year cycle that started back on March 2nd of 2022 kicked into gear November 30th of 2022. And now we have this beautiful full moon, blue moon, August 31st in Pisces, where really a lot more is revealed. Um, things that you might not even be able to see in the moment are, um, will be shown to you if you look back on August 31st. And then this moon family completes May 30th of 2024. So that is the end of August. So you can see why having your home as an anchor in August is going to be really important. Now, I'm going to be gone all of August, right? And so having a, a home away from home set up is going to be really important to me. Um, I'm bringing my juicer. I'm setting up some cre cre <laughs> creature comforts. <laughs> and I'm doing things to make sure that my the Airbnb for the whole month feels really nurturing and calm and serene, right? So that's going to be important, whether you're home or away. Uh, this nesting, the sixth energy of the numerology, the seven energy of the whole year, this being on this soul quest, right? Uh, and learning lessons and synchronicities right where you are in your own home, in your own body, right? You don't have to go far to see the synchronicities. The other day, the other morning, I was walking on the beach and I found a tile and it said, uh, there is a house. That's what it said. It's just like a, like a bathroom tile. It said there is a house. And in my mind, I'm singing like in New Orleans, right? Like, cause I go into the whole music side, the Tiffany jukebox plays all the time in my head. Well, <clears throat> my friend pointed out, it's like, no, that's a spiritual sign that there's a house for you coming up, which is true, right? We put our stuff in storage. We've had a, a digital nomad summer and there is a house on its way. And so these little signs, it's like, you don't have to go far. They're on your daily walk. They're in your... Um, in your cupboard, they're around your neighborhood. So in August, look for these signs and symbols from spirit nearby, right? Uh, okay, I could keep going, but let's complete August and let's take a breath as we shift gears into September, okay? Oh, oh. So September, 2023, um, this is nice. This is when we experience our Equinox, our classes this month are going to be about equinox alignment. Um, on the second, we're going to be teaching an astrology class about the midheaven and your purpose. On the seventh, we're going to be talking about tribal channels. On the 21st, we're going to extend our study of psychic senses and going into the senses of just seeing things clairvoyantly and just knowing things. You know, sometimes you just know you have that sense. Um, so this whole month, September 2023, 20, your theme is about soul alignment and finding fulfillment in self-development. This is because the numerology is a seven month and a seven year. So there's that double rainbow energy, um, that energy of the soul quest. It really encourages your personal re reflection, your personal growth. It encourages you to check your motives and um, to get in touch with the life lessons that are here uniquely for you. Um, the big news in astrology in September, Venus and Mercury are going to go direct. So what have we learned from all of the lessons of Leo and Virgo? Uh, the unpredictable skies in September where things feel like we're going to have those unexpected expenses or maybe an unexpected breakthrough. Um, more likely September 29th and 15th. I don't know why I did those backwards in that order, but that's what's up. Um, big energy on day one, the first day of the month sets the tone. There's no planetary aspects. So I always look to the moon if there's nothing super inter interesting going on with the aspects. Um, the moon's going to be in Aries on September 1st. And so that's kind of nice because Aries is the first sign in the zodiac. It's the pioneer. It's the fresh beginning. It's the new start. And so September 1st, this can be the day one or one day, right? This can be the, the first day of the rest of your life. Um, this can be a month where you maybe uh, give yourself permission to start a bunch of things without having to finish them. Um, 
you know, things like this. Venus will go direct in Leo on the third. So these themes around love and money, the, the issues that have cropped up over the last couple of months, you can start to feel a sense of understanding, clarity, and completion around them. Um, uh, Venus began her retrograde cycle back on July 23rd ends on here on September 3rd, and she'll still be in the shadow period all the way until October 7th. And so this whole fall, we're still reflecting and getting insight and information. Um, and September 4th, Jupiter is gonna retrograde in Taurus. I have a whole separate talk planned on uh, financial astrology because this Jupiter and Taurus thing has been um, just something that astrologers are very excited about, right? So Jupiter will take its retrograde cycle September 4th through December 31st of this year. And as it goes into its retrograde cycle, Mercury will trend Jupiter. So there's usually good news. Uh, there's usually something worth shouting about, uh, talking about, screaming from the mountaintops. You know, Jupiter is the megaphone and Mercury is the data, the news. So look for the winds. Um, September 6th, wow, we've got... Uh, Mercury is in the heart of the sun, so Kazemi, and there's a last quarter moon at 14 degrees of Gemini, which is all about news and information exchange and classes and data. Um, how can you how can you have more focused communication? Um, how can you bullet point some things and really get to the point and really convey and transmit messages, you know, September 6th? Um, and <clears throat> yeah, there's some interesting things going on here. Let's look at the next one, September 14th. The new moon will be at 21 degrees of Virgo. Your new moon intention for Virgo is it feels good to be thoroughly organized and create healthy routines. Are you seeing a theme in the astrology this quarter, right? So the new moon, good time to set intentions because you're starting off a new two and a half year cycle. So intentions in what? Virgo stuff health, service, data, pets, traditions, everyday maintenance, uh, routines, anything that requires attention to detail. Um, and so this is a yin phase. It represents our subconscious influences. You might have some intentions and ideas, but you might let them simmer a little bit. You might not be totally aware of it. You're in the dark night. There's no light during this time. It's more of a subconscious uprising. So more is going to be shown to you over time, wherever 21 degrees of Virgo is in your birth chart. The Sabian symbol of this new moon is a royal coat of arms. Interesting, right? And I wonder if a royal coat of arms will be uh, part of the, the Venus retrograde media story this year. So this new moon that starts on September um, 14th, 15th, depending on your time zone, uh, will continue and it will be ignited on June 14th of 2024. The it more will be revealed on March 14th of 2025, and this moon cycle will complete on December 11th of 2025. So uh, we have all this listed for you, of course, in the Wise Guys digital calendar. You can find it at wiseguyscollective.com in our shop. Um, I love uh, looking at the moon family story because it helps us see that it's not just about this one moment in time, that we are part of a tapestry of something broader. And it shows us these little chapters of life, right? That we are really connected to, at least emotionally connected to. On the 15th, Mercury will go direct in Virgo. Yay. So uh, what needs to be renegotiated? Mercury is definitely direct, but it's going to remain in retro shade until September 30th. So sparks could fly. We've got the sun trying Uranus. It could be the good kind. It could be those aha moments, those uh, this uh, all starting to make sense. Stuff like this can be happening on the 15th. The 16th through the 20th, um, there's some more renewal going on and up level. We've got, here's the, here's the uh, transits. Venus is going to square Jupiter, right? Surprise expenses. The sun is going to oppose Mars and Neptune. Okay. Some inflammatory uh, illusion. Um, things aren't clear. The sun trine, the sun will also trine Neptune and Pluto. So it's like that breakdown to have a breakthrough, that letting go in order to create a, a new story, a new creation process. So a lot of renewal energy going on the 16th through 20th. And then we have a first quarter moon on the 22nd and 29 degrees of Sagittarius. Um, first quarter is a yang phase, time to be in action. What pressures are working in your favor? Sagittarius, what, what little mini adventure do you want to go on? Do you want to get back into your Duolingo app and start working on a new foreign language? Stuff like this can be fun. 
the sun will enter Libra September 23rd through October 23rd. I can't believe we're talking about Libra season. So happy birthday, Libras. Um, make sure that you send your Libras cards and recognize them and send them, uh, just tell them how much you appreciate and love them. Make sure all of your Libras feel adored on their birthday, during their birthday season. Uh, Venus, which governs Libra, is going to be in a trine on Chiron as the sun enters Libra. We call that an ingress, you know, when the sun moves into a new sign, when any planet moves into a new sign, it's called an ingress. And so I feel like you're gonna have a little unexpected blessing as we start Libra season, okay? Uh, and the, of course the fall equinox. Um, and so I want you to look for good news, the 23rd through the 25th too, because Mercury will also try in Jupiter. Um, the last thing that we're going to talk about in September is the full moon at six degrees of Aries. So we started September with day one and being the, um, the moon in Aries and this month where you might start some things and not finish them, no big deal. But now we've got the full moon in six degrees of Aries and there's going to be a, a self-illumination, something that you see about yourself that you couldn't see before. Uh, you can set intentions about yourself, about removing blocks to new beginnings, about um, anything that is hindering your confidence and helping you overcome that so that you can be more powerfully and uniquely you and shine and show up as you um, and just be willing to make some adjustments uh, to your view of yourself, right, to your vision of yourself. So the full moon celebrating progress, knowing that uh, emotions are high, energy is high. Um, this starts, excuse me, this is the third peg in four moons of a larger 27 month cycle. And so you can get extra insight to what is culminating and building energy where you're going to be seeing a pivot right now, wherever six degrees of Aries is in your chart. What house is it in? What planets are there? Uh, what's influencing that house right now? So six degrees of Aries. This uh, moon family story started on April 1st of 2022. So you can look back if you keep track of what was going on digitally or maybe of a journal, look back to April 1st. What was going on in your life? What kind of new thing was starting? December 30th of 2022, that was when we had the first quarter moon at eight Aries. So what was poised for action? What was your yang? What, what were you taking action? What were you really getting into and, um, you know, doing something uh, rather than just thinking about it? And now here we have the September 29th full moon at, in Aries. So what, what are you pivoting? Where is more, what is being revealed to you? What is being illuminated under the light of the full moon? Uh, the light of the full moon helps us find things, you know, miss, hidden mysteries, uh, hidden objects, missing people. Um, it helps us diagnose things that have been previously a mystery. Um, <clears throat> so this could be a, a very self-illuminating time for you. And then this moon family story will complete on June 28th of 2024 when the mission is complete. So we're all learning and growing. We're all evolving. We can we use the astrology for our own evolution. Use it as a weather forecast. Don't use it against yourself. Uh, and just know, you know, that times are always changing and that sometimes the tide is higher and sometimes the tide is lower. And it looks like July and August, the tide's going to be a little bit higher. We're going to be more emotionally charged. The world out there is likely to be more emotionally charged. There's a greater purpose for that, right? The greater purpose is finding your own rhythm and finding your faith and finding your own stillness and your return to love, right? So we can work through these times uh, with um, poise, with grace, as long as you have your anchors, um, get your family life in, in order, your home structure in order, and that's going to help you move through this season um, with grace and ease. So I hope this has been useful to you, and I wish you all a very happy third quarter, July through September. Uh, let's see how it plays out. You know, please feel free to comment or refer to our article. This is all written for you in a blog post at wiseguyscollective.com. For those that don't know, we have a membership <clears throat> where you can attend all of our classes as part of the gift of your membership. And so if that interests you, please check out the membership page. We would love to have you. We would love to read for you, to do one-on-one -on -one readings for you. And so, um, you know, welcome to the community if you're new. And if you've been here for a long time, we're glad to see your familiar faces. Love to each of you. 
And I'm just setting the intention that this information blesses you in ways that are just wild beyond measure, that it just blesses you and encourages you um, to live as yourself and to love yourself. Namaste, guys. <laughs>